You're inside the press box. Christian FM Sports presents Inside the Press Box, where we discuss all sports from our favorite high school team to college and pro. Here's your host, Paul Tipton and Gary Paris. Hey, Vero Nation. Thanks for joining us inside the press box as Vero Beach wrapped up its season, the regular season, last week against a win over Vieira at home at the Citrus Bowl, 28-14. to And at the end of the night, a lot of fireworks and celebration going on as Vero Beach once again undefeated season. New state record set at 62 consecutive regular season wins. But now we get to put that behind us and start thinking about postseason play. And round one of the playoffs, the quarterfinal of the region, begins this coming Friday night. Vero Beach, over the weekend, had a pretty good idea who we were going to play, but got it finalized over the weekend. And Vero Beach will be facing Boca Raton. That is the eighth seed taking on your fighting Indians, who at GP are the number one seed in the region. The Indians are very fortunate. They had a good schedule this year and a tough schedule. And they won all their games. This allows them to have the, in the southern regions, we had the highest points. So we would have a home game for four straight weeks if we're fortunate enough to get that deep. That's huge and big for our fans. Oh, no kidding. I mean, uh, you know, Vero Beach loves to play at home, does well at home. Um, Although, you can look back. Uh, definitely last year and the year before that, we lost at home. Absolutely. So there's no guarantees, but you do like your chances when you get to stay at home and play on your home turf and be in front of your fans on a Friday night. Yeah, that, that this is going to be a fantastic game. This team is an eighth seed. I think our region has the best, some of the best teams that are out there. I mean, this is a very good region. And you you, you win the, to win three games and get to the semifinals. You've got to, it's going to be against some very good teams. Well, and we're in a new region this year. By the way, we need to clarify that. For the yes. last several years, we have been in what's Region Two. So, if you don't know much about how the whole playoff brackets work, let me kind of give you a quick rundown here. So, they break it up into four regions. Region One is your northern schools, um, and there's not a lot of 8A schools that are much, you know, past north. I'd say of Ocala. So, you know, you're really dealing with like maybe a Jackson team and then some Ocala, Gainesville, and that, that kind of area. Then Region 2, which is where we were resided for a number of years, is some of your Orlando teams to your um, Polk County into some of your West Coast over there uh, around you know Tarpon Springs area and that, that kind of area. And Sarasota Riverview is an, a team I can think of. Region 3 now moves down a little south as you get into the Palm Beach County teams. Again, you will see some, I don't know, actually there are no West Coast teams in this particular region. Then you get Region 4, and that gets you down into your Dade and Broward County uh, type of schools there. So that's how it all plays out. So Vero moved from Region 2, now they're in Region 3. So uh, our bracket shapes up a little bit like this. So at number 1 seed is Vero Beach. The number 2 seed is Palm Beach Central. Number three is Deerfield Beach. Number four is St. Lucius. Those are the four seeds based off of they won their respective districts. And the districts are 9, 10, 11, and 12. That's the representation. Then you have what are the the remaining four seeds, Gary, and that is your at-large teams that come from those respective districts. And it starts with the fifth seed, which will be Treasure Coast, The sixth seed, Palm Beach Gardens. The seventh seed is St. Lucie West Centennial. And the eighth seed, who Vero Beach will be playing on Friday night, Boca Raton. So, Gary, out of our district, District 9, there are three teams out of four teams overall that are represented in the playoff bracket. And I can remember, Paul, a few years back when Vero was winning the district, we had a very weak district. It was not a very hard district, and if they'd had a point system back then, there would not have been any uh, runner-up or, right. or second or two or two Correct. teams coming out of our district. Yep. But in the last few years, Treasure Coast has improved their program immensely, and so has Centennial, and it makes a very competitive, as you know, 
We beat Centennial 15 to 13, and we beat Treasure Coast 31 to 30. So in overtime, in overtime. <laughs> so you know that uh, how tough a district that is, mm-hmm. and it, that we've had played this year. So uh, Vero Beach is because of our schedule and be winning nine and winning nine games. And our the way it works is you got your your record, your opponent's record, and then your opponent's opponent's record. And there's a lot of stock put in the uh, into that. About that's the three things that makes up the RPI to get your rankings in the state. Gary, it's been a while since we've played Boca. I think we may have played them in a spring contest uh, this this past spring. But as far as playoff goes, this takes us way, way back, back, probably about, uh, I'm going to say about almost 15 years now, that we traveled down and played Boca Raton, a game that we started off slow, came back, almost had a chance to win it, but in the end came up just a little bit short. Uh, the the Bobcats come in here 8-2 uh, and two overall. Um, you know, they, they basically were just a, a breath away from winning their district. They could have been maybe the fourth seed uh, in, the, in this playoff bracket, but instead now they'll be the eighth seed based off of their RPI. Uh, they match up with Vero Beach fairly interesting because they come in averaging uh, 23 points a game to Vero Beach 24. Well, let me say this to you right now. I, I think that that it's going to be tough for anybody when they play Vero Beach. Vero Beach has played one of its toughest schedules that I can remember in a long time. Mm-hmm. This team has taken on every opponent and has beaten them. Some way, somehow. And uh, with the likes of Vieira, which was a great team we played last Friday night, and we'll talk a little bit more about them. But when you've played them, you've got uh, uh, Chardonnay. Shamanad. <laughs> Shamanad. <laughs> Shamanad Madonna. Hey, guys, I got one on the over-under. <laughs> yeah. Shamanad Madonna. Uh, uh, Madonna, mm-hmm. who's a top-ranked team, was num- ranked number fifth at the time mm-hmm. in the state of Florida. Then you have Treasure Coast, Centennial, and then you, you throw in American Heritage. Yep. And it, it made for a very tough schedule it did. for Vero Beach. And Vero Beach won them all. And, and it's going to be interesting, Gary, to see – how prepared does that make Vero Beach for the postseason? I mean, there's always those two schools of thought. I mean, you know, yeah, you want to play some tough opponents to get a kind of barometer of where you are as a program, get ready for postseason. You also want to make sure you're not beating yourself up through the course of the season and you don't have any gas left in the tank when it comes time for the playoffs. Well, the way I look at it is I look at it how you finish the season. Yeah. I look at it how you're peaking. To me, I thought our defense played a fantastic game against the uh, the uh, Shamanad uh, Madonna team. Twenty one, what twenty one nothing, if I'm not mistaken, or correct twenty one nothing on that game. Our defense played great. Our offense did a really good job mm-hmm. and was able to uh, capitalize on some turnovers and capitalize on some big plays by our defense. Then you go into Vieira. And Vieira came in with uh, 133 tackles for losses. They came in with 60 sacks in eight games. This was supposed to be the best defense we've seen all year. I thought our offensive line played its best game all year. I thought Ryan Jankowski, other than the one interception, managed the game very well at quarterback. I thought he had threw the ball well. I thought he did a great job of releasing the ball, getting the ball out of his hands. No sacks. No sacks against Ryan Jankowski, against a team that came in and had sacked their opponent's quarterback 60 times in Vieira. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and, and a, a game that many people thought would be a tremendous challenge and see how Vero, if they could have, you know, if they can play up against a team as good as Vero, who only two losses were to Rockledge and to Coco two other district champs in, the, in Brevard County. I thought it was the way Vero is starting to peak. I think I see him getting better and better each week. Last week, the line play was phenomenal. The it offensive was. line, oh. unbelievable. I thought at Ryan, and how about the – we've had two banged-up running backs. Yeah. You take uh, Jaden 
Meisinger, and I think you you had him for a night or Lenny had him for nineteen carries, one hundred and sixty seven yards rushing. That's his that's his height. Uh, that's his most yards uh, any game during the season. Two mm-hmm. touchdowns. Then you got uh, McMillan, Bobby McMillan, who had almost a hundred yards on ten carries and two touchdowns. Yep. Then throw Ryan Jankowski in for nineteen of twenty six. For 199 yards. Now, this is something that you won't ever see at Vero Beach High School. Zero touchdown passes because we had four running touchdown passes mm-hmm. and one, and one interception. Fantastic job by the offense of managing the game. The defense played probably their one of their best games again because they were very talented quarterback and receivers. And they did a great job to me in uh, holding them just to 14 points. I agree, Gary. And just to watch that the offensive line uh, find a little bit of a rhythm uh, and use that running game, that ground game. And it wasn't the ground and pound. It was, you know, we ran a few passes, and now all of a sudden the, the running game started to open up, and it was you know, 10 yards here, 20 yards there, big runs by both Meisinger and McMillan. Uh, Both got uh, two touchdowns each in that ball game. And, uh, I mean, Jaden basically said, I I got the first half. McMillan said, I got you in the second half. I mean, because that's really how it ended up. And, and, I mean, I got to feel, Gary, I mean, you've played the game uh, more than anybody that we have on the broadcast crew. A run game, to me, whenever you can um, establish that run game and you score the way Vero Beach scored, you know, with four rushing touchdowns, to me, that almost becomes a demoralizing thing to your opponent. Well, what helps the running game is to have a very successful passing game. Absolutely. Because what you like to do is you got to get your linebackers involved in your passing game. Mm-hmm. Vero has tremendous speed in its receivers. Jermaine Dawson and Keith Woolard and... Uh, Tyler Wren, they're all and Bethel were all pretty fast young uh, mm-hmm. young men. Yep. So you've got great speed back there. So you want to keep your linebackers able to take away the slants, and because uh, that's what Viral's had tremendous success on. Mm-hmm. And Coach Jankowski did a great job reading. The old saying is, and every coach does this. They know you you count the men in the box. You count them if the, you've got less than a certain number, then you're going to run the ball. If you've got more in the box, then you're going to throw the ball if you have the ability to do that. Mm-hmm. So Vero did a great job. Lenny Jankowski, I thought, I thought he and Ryan were on, on in sync all night and uh, did a great job. It was a great call game. Robert Leslie, his defense, again, I, you're starting to see Vero get better and better. But how about Kendrick Willis and uh, Pete DeLuke, that def- offensive line? The game before, they struggled. This game, they made the adjustments. That's good coaching. That's players that are willing to do what they're supposed to do. And, man, did we have a game watching them. How about the boys, too? I mean, you know, it's one thing for for the coaches to come in and go, hey, look, we got a plan. But the fact that they took the challenge presented by the coaches and they stood up to it. They said, we're going to take that challenge on. And, boy, man, that was fun to watch, Gary. Yeah, and they, and again they they set the record at sixty one the yeah. week before, so you think there might be a little uh, letdown yeah, right. going into sixty two. Yeah, nope, nope, not this bunch. They wanted to finish the season undefeated and let the next year pass the baton to next year's class. So congratulations to twenty nineteen football team going undefeated, and now you're going into the playoffs. The challenge will be for Vero Beach to get past the third round. Vero. With Lenny Jankowski mm-hmm. has been our, has been the head coach here, has had the misfortunes of not being able to get past the third round yeah. in the playoffs. It will be. We could talk more about that as as we start to work through the you know, the playoff bracket. Um, you know, and again, Gary, you know, here's a little interesting footnote. I think uh, you know, go back. Let's look at the schedule a little bit. So we ended up playing Vieira at the end of the season, and that was because the year before. We had some some situations with Sebastian and where they went and where they wanted to play the game, and so we ended up turning that into the preseason game, which was originally supposed to be Vieira. And we said, "Hey guys, you know Vieira, can you guys, you know, can we put you on on the regular season?" And they're like, 
Yeah, in fact, not only do we want to do this, we want to turn this into like a regular thing. So this is like step one and potentially what could end up being another, you know, rival down the road with Vieira. But Gary, look at it now and you you see how things play out in the course of a year now. And it's like, imagine if we had played Vieira at the beginning of the year as a preseason game versus now at the end of the year, what a nice tune-up to get ready for the playoffs. Absolutely. And I think the loser in all this is going to be Sebastian because yeah. Sebastian doesn't get that chance to play Vero Beach. Yep. And it's not uh, – a preseason game doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. It is just no. a preseason game. Yep. You play a lot of people. Nobody remembers the scores in the past and all like that. But the big loser out of this is Sebastian because I think that playing Vero Beach makes you a better program. No matter – sooner or later you're going to win – and sooner or later you're going to start winning your program but how are you going to measure yourself to them if you don't want to play them and you know what it pretend and you 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 hit the nail on the head i think it hits them twice how about this if if you had vero on on the regular season schedule your rpi changes and they just missed the playoffs i i said that earlier in the year if you remember one of our broadcasts that it hurts when you don't play vero beach because even if you lose you still get a lot of points yep for playing Vero Beach, yep. who, you know, so um, you're right. But the loser, the big loser of this has been Sebastian. Hey, hey and give credit to, to uh, Sebastian. The, the team that we saw back at the preseason game, I don't know if, if that was a, a thing of they just got so devastated by the injury of their starting quarterback or what happened, because that just, to me, looked like a team that just went in total disarray. But, man, did they turn things around through the season. Sorry they didn't make the playoffs, but, you know, you know, hey, credit to them that they didn't just hang their heads and, and turn that into an, an, an 0-9 or 10 season. They actually... Uh, had a chance to make the playoffs. Okay. <laughs> That's all he's going to say about that, folks. So, all right, Gary. Well, we've got our first playoff game coming the way, coming our way on Friday night against Boca Raton, and uh, there's a lot of things we could say about this. I mean, I, I even hate to even say this, but you, know, you look at some kind of comparison. We've got a couple of comma opponents, and it's our district opponents. Um, so we both played Fort Pierce Central. Boca Raton played Boca uh, played or excuse me Fort Pierce Central played Boca Raton uh, early in September and Boca beat them six to three. Vero Beach played them about six weeks later. We played uh, Central and, and won twenty eight to three. Boca lost to Treasure Coast uh, the week after the Central game thirty three to seventeen. Of course, we beat Treasure Coast about a month later uh, in overtime thirty one to thirty. I don't know if that means anything about what could potentially happen in this ball game but at least you got something to kind of look at and go hmm i think what coach jay is doing he's going to go back and just look at the last three games or four games and evaluate what they've done see if there's anything different they've done from game six through game 10 or or game five through game nine depending on how many you got in and see if there's anything different that he would have to be looking out for that they may have run and said, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'll save that play for later. But I think that uh, Book Raton's a good football team. I think, though, uh, they're, they're, you know, Viral, Viral can win this ball game. It's a game Viral can win. It's a game Viral's going to have to go out and play disciplined ball, <clears throat> do assignment football, and, 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 and I think protect your quarterback. Ryan does a great job of getting rid of that ball quick. He's just he is to me has been I'm, I'm probably he's the there's a guy you say to yourself okay who do you think's been the most improved player on the whole team and I think it's Ryan Jankowski because we didn't get to see a lot of Ryan in the past mm-hmm. but I go back last year and I remember him throwing a deep slant for a touchdown to uh, Cuff. For about 35 yards, I remembered that. That's the vision I have. That's what I thought I, of what I thought would be uh, Ryan's strength. And as the season has gone, Ryan has lived up to those expectations. He has like been one of the most. He's gotten better and better and better and better each game. And coaches allowed him to expand his installment of the uh, of the offense. He had to protect him because teams were beating us across the ball at times. 
We've had some, our, our linemen have made a lot of uh, what I call execution uh, mistakes. And they've had some, uh, and just that's not taking the right step. Or that is like you, you, you're you supposed to double team, mm-hmm. and the guy splits you, <laughs> and then you've had some focus problems where you just blown an assignment, right. or you missed a call that was there, and it allowed your defender to come in and more fr- freer than you would like. But I thought this line had played its best game. I thought Ryan Jankowski has been just fantastic this year. He's had the ability to get the ball to Keith Woolard. He's had the ability to get it to Jermaine Dawson. And then you, you, you running backs, I thought, started out great. Then they got hurt, and they've been just – then the last week they come back with a bang. And I think that uh, – I think Viral is starting to play some of his best football. It's a good time to start peaking and getting in rhythm as you head into round one of the state playoffs. And again, that's Friday night at the Citrus Bowl. Special programming note, kickoffs at 7.30, not 7 p.m. like it's been in the regular season. Our coverage, though, it will begin, as usual, at 6 p.m. with countdown to kickoff. So make sure to tune in. We'll get you set for the game and get ready for the kickoff at 7.30. Looking forward to Friday night, and as always, go Indians. Thanks for joining us inside the Press Box. For more, go to ChristianFM.com.